back to Scoundrels Inc., another Star Wars podcast. I am Frank Jens, back here with the one and only Brandon Hanna. And Brandon, we got uh, we got a few things, we got a few items on the agenda today to talk about. Obviously, The Bad Batch, uh, episode 12, just came out. We're going to talk about that, break it down. And then we're going to go through the, the Tales of the Empire trailer. That dropped uh, while we were... In between episodes, I think. Or did we already talk about that? No, we did it. It was in between episodes. Yeah, Man, it was a long it, week. <laughs> like the morning we dropped yeah, the last that's right. episode. That's right. It, the the mo- last Thursday morning, um, yeah, we got we got superseded by Tales of the Empire trailer. And I was like, well, there there's that. And then we'll also talk about the new re- newly released Star Wars Outlaws trailer that came out the game uh, by Ubisoft. That's coming out a little bit later this year. We'll talk about that trailer and our thoughts on it. Uh, But for right now, if you're new to the channel uh, or if if you're back and you still haven't subscribed, hit hit that subscribe button. Help us out. Uh, Hit like on this video and leave us a comment down below what you think of Bad Batch or, you know, uh, the Outlaws trailer, uh, Tales of the Empire trailer. Give us all your thoughts. We want to read them. We want to see them. So um, tune in. Uh, I don't know. That was a weird... Tune in's not the right word to trans- to be like, just <laughs> pop down in the comments or whatever. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. Anyways, uh, social media stuff, links down in the description, you know, you know all that stuff. Uh, Brandon, what have you been up to uh, this past week? What you got going on? Well, you know, just living the dream. I, when you brought up items, I thought you were going to say items on my desk because I got got some new things here. What do you got? Um, well, my, uh, my, my partner in crime... Uh, not Kevin Smets, but <laughs> um, she went to Disneyland without me. Oh, and, wow. Um, and I got this cool Jabba the Hut. I think it's like a popcorn bucket. You can only it get it at up. Disneyland. Okay. Oh, wow. Why, why would you want it? That's just I feel like, super appetizing. Oh, you know, wait, <laughs> It's off. Because I, I, I literally, I, I've had this for like almost a week. And... Uh, I just found out on TikTok today that it actually has batteries in it and makes noises. You had so, to learn that from TikTok. Yeah. So without <laughs> okay. further ado, I turned it on. Let's see if it okay. if it's all charged up. Nope. What a uh, reveal! <laughs> wow. What the? John was a little tired. John was a little. Tired. Oh wait, I didn't pull the little plastic tab. Oh, out. the plastic tab. Why do they even have that? Okay, ready. Okay. Let's... Oh. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> That's wait. That's just a lot of gargling. Oh my god. Why does it keep doing that? Maybe I haven't even opened them yet. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> nothing nothing happens when you open it. Okay. Well, okay. well we would close it though. I could have sworn something happened. The guy on TikTok said something happened when you opened it. Okay. It's got well, this beautiful lanyard uh, with a little wow. salacious bee crumb. Hey, look at that. Attachment. It's pretty cool. And then I honestly, I think this is super sick. Sabrina didn't think so, but this is a Star Tours poster oh, of the yeah. new. Um, they have like an Ahsoka, Mandalorian, Andor. Oh, hell yeah. Do those uh, map right there. I or whatever now. you want to okay. call it now. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so this is you flying with the space whales, um, fighting off those little like mercenaries that was working yeah. with Morgan Elsbeth and all that. So that's pretty that is cool. pretty cool. That I is like pretty that. Cool. That's I'd put cool. that up on the wall for real if I could. <laughs> if you could, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if I were allowed, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, let's see. What do I have? Uh, what do I have? I have. Um, I got. I got this little. Uh, I don't think I've shown this before. A little uh, Grogu um, with the spider. Remember that episode in Mando yeah. with the spiders, Scary. ice spiders. Um, so I got that. You know, I got that on my desk. And, <laughs> uh, I got a little uh, BB-8. Little BB-8. This is actually, um, it's actually a uh, cake ornament, if you will. You know, cake decoration. Mm-hmm. And I just kept it. So. You know, nice. I was like BB-8. Why well, am I gonna throw away BB-8? No. Keep BB-8 on my desk. So that's that's the only decoration I have. Other than that, it's like stuff I actually use. Um, <laughs> yeah. 
It's the only Star Wars stuff I currently have on my desk. I do have some like film strip from like Attack of the Clones on here that I got. Uh, let's see if I can pull it out without taking anything else out. I don't know if I've showed this before, but what is that? It's like an Attack oh, of the Clones. Okay. It's like this scene where she's like in front of the fireplace and she's like, Hell "No, yeah. don't kiss me." Is that, is that the X-rated film strip? Is that I don't know. That... <laughs> That sounds like I just said something that I feel like Kevin would have said. Um, I don't know. Uh, this side's <laughs> dustier than that side. Maybe that is. Oh, you can. Yeah, you gotta shine a light through it. Almost. You gotta shine a light through it. Where's but. my phone? If I shine my phone light, you think it'll work? Yeah, why not? Go for it. Let's see. This is Let's how movies are made. Children. Yeah. <laughs> you ever go to the movie theater before? You know, we had the eclipse earlier this week, and now we got another oh, one going on here. You can, oh, she's upside down. Yeah, she's upside down. Yeah, yeah. You can Don't worry, the projector see. will, you know, you know, when yeah. it goes to the projector, it'll be right side up, obviously. They they had these in every seat when I went to go see the live uh, episode recording of the George Lucas talk show. Oh, nice. With, with um, Connor Ratliff and Griffin Newman and that other guy. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually never listened to it. I know no. of it. I know of it. I've seen, like, you know stuff on Instagram or whatever or, or Twitter uh, about it. Never have checked it out personally. Should They're I? They're funny. It's actually not Griffin Newman. It's Watto. I don't know why I said that. It's Watto, the actual Watto and the actual George Lucas. Oh, okay. Yes, right. Because yes, yes. I was like, George Lucas talk show. Obviously, mm-hmm. George Obviously. Lucas is, is doing it. Um, but how was that show you were at? The George Lucas talk show? Yeah. Oh, it was really fun. It was really good. I highly recommend my... P- People check it out. I discovered them through a future friend of the show, Alex Marzonia. Mm. He um he uh is a big fan of the Griffey Nooms. And uh right. when um during the very beginning of the pandemic, they did like a charity stream where they watched every single Star Wars movie and like I think it was like including like the Ewok movies and everything consecutively oh, without stopping. It was like from start to finish. That's awesome. Like they were like like hallucinating at the end of it. Like it was so long. It was Man, they crazy. were making their own Star Wars. You know? Yeah, but they thought um, they were probably in the Star Wars. They, they mm-hmm. thought, and then the nightmare was the Ewok movies, which I still have never seen. Um, saving those for a rainy day, obviously. But, uh, but no, that yeah. show that show sounds fun. Yeah, no, it was pretty cool. It's a pretty cool thing they did. They raised some good money to keep. Um, to keep some money in the pockets of people who are out of work, I think in like the New York theater industry and stuff like oh, that. Okay. So yeah. Right. Right. Good times. Good times. And then Very I think cool. they started doing like it, it, like almost weekly with like other stuff. There was like this like TV show that no one's ever heard of called Arliss <laughs> and Robert <laughs> Wool is I, like the star wait, of it. I guess Arliss is a pretty old show. I know. I've, I've yeah. never seen Arliss, but I know of the show Arliss, but anyways, yeah, and I think they got Robert Wool to actually come on one of the streams too, or multiple ones. It was pretty huh. funny. Look you know, the that. guy from Batman '89. It's like the reporter friend. Yeah, 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 yeah. This must be King of the Wicker People. Yeah, <laughs> Kevin would get that joke if he was here. <laughs> he, he, yeah, he would. Um, uh, oh, also forgot to mention at the end of the show, we'll talk about we, we got some cues in our Discord. Uh, just a couple. Cues. Um, we haven't done we haven't done that in a while. Asked for some questions, so I kind of sprung it on. Discord last minute, but uh, so we got a couple in there we'll get to um, as we get through Bad Batch, Tales of the Empire, and Star Wars Outlaw. But uh, let's let's dive into this episode of Bad Batch. Again, not a whole lot to dive into um, because it's very much um, about, okay, we got to get something to get somewhere, that kind of thing. And look, first of all, I was I enjoyed the episode overall. I liked it. Um, it's a simple episode. It's a fun, entertaining episode, I thought. Uh, I say this every week. The music is awesome. The show looks awesome. Every establishing shot in the episode and in previous episodes are just immaculately gorgeous. Um, and I'm excited that we're getting a Tales of the Empire series in the style of this animation. That's going to be fun as hell to watch. But for this episode, I liked it overall. Not one of like the best episodes of this season or of the series overall. Um, it looks great. They, they touched on some important stuff with Omega, Hemlock, and Emery. And that's important. Um, a little bit of the dynamic with the Bad Batch with Crosshair Hunter and 
and Wrecker. And then Fee came back. Um, Brandon, what were your thoughts uh, on this episode? I liked it. It, w- it was certainly less of a filler episode than the one with um, Fennec and like those oh, alligators, sure. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Like this one, like I think like bringing Rampart back was like a pretty cool move. Yes, and that was that threw me for a loop. I was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, it makes sense like thematically and story wise. And so to like see him back and see them on the same side, I mean, it's going to be an interesting dynamic because in what way would he, I mean, I'm sure he'll find a way, but in what way would he betray them? Because, I mean, he's not in the good graces of the Empire. He's literally in an Imperial work prison. Yeah. Um, like maybe he could try to like turn them in to gain favor back. But I mean, he's been, he's been like, he was publicly like shamed for <laughs> yeah. blowing up Camino. Like, like, <laughs> like he was like on the hollow net. They're like, Rampart yeah. is a bad dude. They actually broadcasted <laughs> that. Yeah. It, yeah. That was like, like broadcasted to everybody <laughs> in the Imperial Senate. Like, so it's like, I don't think there's coming any coming back from that. So I don't, not that he's going to join the rebellion or anything, but he's going to, you know, He's not going to be happy with the Empire, I don't think. Um, So we'll see how that goes. But um, And I I thought it was like very reminiscent of that episode in The Mandalorian where we see them infiltrate that Imperial Remnant um, with... uh, What's his name? Uh, Yes, with Bill Burr's character. Bill Burr's character, yeah. Um, It starts with an M. I can't... Mayfeld. Mayfeld, there you go, there you go, there you go. Uh, uh, yeah, so I, I, I was very reminiscent of that. Um, I was a like even bit, wondering yeah. for a second. I was like, is that the same place? That, like, or that is that a little oh, right. like Easter egg? Like, I didn't even know if they were on like the same. At the that would have been base. crazy, actually. Yeah. That been kind of funny. <laughs> but so, and that was pretty cool. And then there was like, it was like little bits of that, little bits of like the the conveyic scene from like Solo, a Star Wars story, at the end with like the stormtroopers jumping on yeah. top and. Uh, like a few other things, um, so I dug it. I don't know. Yeah, like the 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 action sequences, ton of fun, a lot of fun to watch. Um, they're very um, engaging, and you know, you know, they they try and pull this little, um, uh, little I don't know, I'm not, not a trick, but when Wrecker's jumping off of that um, tank and onto the ship, yeah. you know, he's like a little bit closer. And and they make it seem like because look, Brandon, we're at the we're at the point now. We're at the stage of the series where we only have a few left. Where they could have took a left turn with Rucker and like he misses the jump, and then we and like maybe he it would have been a weird spot to do it in, sure. But like in the moment when I'm watching it, I'm like, don't try and pretend like. Wrecker's in trouble. Wrecker's gonna make the jump. Don't give me this. Oh, it's too far. You know, crap. <laughs> so <laughs> even though you know, um, so uh, all that to say, good storytelling on that. Uh, you know, keep the suspense going. At least it got me. Um, yeah, the Admiral Rampart part is really and how we got to that though. Going back to Crosshair in the beginning of the episode, you know, they do address. Um, I can't believe you let Omega get captured, you know. And he brings up, you know, valid points that the Empire would have just destroyed the entire island. And Hunter doesn't push back on it or anything like that, um, you know, except for when Crosshair is like, oh, wait a minute, there might be a way to get to Tantis. And you're not going to like it. <laughs> and this whole, I think, uh, position where Crosshair is at in terms of, you know, why didn't you bring it up earlier? Oh, because I'm, I'm like freaking traumatized, dude. Like, <laughs> you can see him grabbing his hand again, you know, just reminiscing on Tantus, and you know, that's you know, his hand is like that because of what they did to him on Tantus. Um, what do you think about Crosshair's kind of like PTSD in that moment? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely like understandable and very in line with like what the character has gone through, and like you said, it's a measure of last resort. Um, and and yeah, uh, as far as the, the whole record thing, I remember thinking, I was like, they're not doing this to us again. Like, there's no way. There's <laughs> right. no way this is happening again. Uh, especially like with the tech stuff feeling so unresolved. Um, it's like, great, now we're just going to have two maybe dead members of the Bad but Batch. Can I, but Brandon, you say the whole tech thing is unre- like unresolved. 
But it actually is. Mm. Guess what? He died. He died. He's alive. He died. He fell. He died. He's somewhere. End of story, you know? He could be that guy. <laughs> he could be that other guy that we saw. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He could be. But could be I don't guy. know. I'm starting to think he's just dead. And that sucks, man. Like, it's a hell of a way to go. Like, baller way to go. Or. Heroic as hell. Maybe. But, Maybe the whole, like, secret trooper guy is, like, a red herring, and Tech is alive, but he, like, escaped capture, and he, like, shows up at the very end of the show and, like, saves the day. He's just like, I heard you guys were in need of help. He has, like, a new <laughs> accent now and everything, because he's, like, <laughs> yeah. been rugged and in the wilderness by himself. Okay. You know? Yeah. Maybe. I think, yeah. I think that's probably what's going to happen. Uh, I will say, now that we're talking about it all out loud... Uh, rescuing Rampart and breaking him out of prison seemed like it was a lot harder than when the Rebellion broke Jyn Erso out of prison in Rogue One. That was like pretty easy. Yeah. They like, showed up on Wobani and they were like, you're being rescued. And like, that was it. They just took her off. <laughs> yeah. No yeah. fight, nothing. This was a whole ordeal. And even then, it was still like a little too easy. I feel like this guy is like, I mean, the Emperor obviously knows he did nothing wrong in terms of, like, he was literally just, right. like, doing what the Emperor wanted. It was like, obviously, guy. it was something yeah. wrong. Like, blowing up an entire civilization is something's wrong. <laughs> but, like, yeah, in yeah. terms of the Emperor, what the Emperor wants for the Empire, he did exactly what the Emperor wanted. But as far as everyone else is concerned, he's probably, like, the biggest war criminal in the Empire <laughs> today. Yeah, yeah. And so I feel like he should have been in, like, like a maximum security <laughs> prison or something. Like, I don't know. Um, I will say that the whole rescue kind of being easy, I actually liked that it was easy for them. Mm-hmm. Because, first of all, they're an elite clone force, right? Clone Force 99, they're elite. They have heightened abilities and all of that. And when we're first introduced to the Bad Batch in the Clone Wars final season, you know, they take out a whole, you know, squad, garrison, whatever, and, you know, wrecking shop and taking care of business. And I think throughout this series, we've seen them struggle a lot in missions and in circumstances. And when I was watching this, I thought the same thing. Like, this is kind of easy. It's kind of going, like, paint by numbers. But this is, like kind of how they normally operate. They're always this good. Yeah, they're they're down a man or two and you know, they're 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 hitting their spots and their marks and they're and they're taking it down and it's going perfectly as, you know, it normally would. But I think we're so accustomed to seeing them struggle be, just because of their circumstance and you know, they're on the run from the empire or they're trying to hide omega. They're never really always on the offensive per mm-hmm. se. Um, so to see them have an easier time, I was like, that's, they deserve that. They deserve, they deserve, you know, uh, a chip shot every once in a while. Yeah. Sorry, my, my cat was being loud. I don't know if you could hear it. He's, I thought I heard, I thought yeah. I heard old Clem. You know, Sabrina's out of town. She's at CinemaCon right now and he misses his mom. So he's very mm. chatty. Well. So he's trying to actually just give his opinions on Star Wars. I think. <laughs> yeah, right. Admiral Rampart, he's a bad man. Yeah, wow. exactly. <laughs> um, um, I, yeah, I, I just feel like it was uh, like it was like the the breakout was like hard and easy, too hard and too easy at the same time. Mm. I feel like it was too, easier than it should have been in terms of how big of a criminal this guy is, but. Harder than it should have be because I feel like they broke out Jenner, so no problem in Rogue One. They just like showed up. Yeah, yeah, and got yeah. her. And um, that was it. I will say another thing about Rampart is when he was talking with in the the factory with the Ugnats. He's like, I don't understand you. I don't. I don't even know what language you're speaking. And I think it just goes back to it just goes back to show you mm-hmm. kind of how the Empire is very. Uh, human <laughs> elite, you know, and mm-hmm. they don't, they're not learning any other language. They're not, you know, learning about anybody else's culture or what have you. And I think that's just kind of like um, a symptom of, or not a symptom, but just kind of uh, Rampart is um, the manifestation of what how the Empire views other 
people or people's civilizations, things like that. So mm-hmm. it's, eh, I don't need to learn about you. You, I, you know. So that's and now it's coming to bite him in the butt because if he could communicate with the Ugnat, maybe things you know would go a little bit easier for him or whatnot. I don't know. But um, I just I kind of picked up on them like oh yeah he's he's an imperial why would he know any other language he would only know one language you know maybe maybe two but mm-hmm. um, certainly not Ognat who are like a slave type species in the Empire at this point now um, as we go on to see in Empire Strikes Back and the Mandalorian and all that stuff um, with Quill so um, yeah. Uh, yeah moving on to uh, Omega going back to Tantus, and uh, why don't you bring a Clem into your lap there? Maybe you got a whole Clem. <laughs> I don't know. He's like just out of my reach for me to grab him <laughs> a little bit. Clemmy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. He's being funny. He said, free the Ugnots. That's what he free said. The U- yeah. Free the Ugnots. Mm-hmm. Um. I'm I'm, so, I'm, a, I'm a nasty imperial. I can't understand a word he's saying. It's <laughs> <laughs> he's probably saying, "Feed me." I'm like, feed I me. just fed him. That's the thing. Yeah, they they mm. always say that. You know, mm-hmm. they're like, "Yeah, you didn't feed me enough." Didn't feed me See, enough. I don't know what he's saying, so I just try to give him everything, and then I give him everything, and he still me out. So wow. I don't know. Man, maybe he's like uh, saying, "Like guys, Kevin's stuck in a well. Go get him." <laughs> 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 yeah. Um. Maybe. I was going to say, you know, with Omega back on Tantus and with Emery, with um, Hemlock now, um, it's interesting how Emery is still, like, she's, she's like, right on the edge of, like, making the turn. You know, when Omega is getting her blood drawn from Emery and Emery goes, I'm just glad, you know, for what it's worth, I'm just glad you're safe. And Omega's like, mm-hmm. am I? And Emery's like... Yeah, you got a point. <laughs> it's like Michael Scott meme. <laughs> yeah. Great, great point. That was a good line, point. though. Uh, yeah. From Omega. And I was always like, damn, it's going to make Emery think. And sure enough, mm-hmm. by, by the end of it, she signed to herself, like, what what am I doing? Or that's at least what I think she's thinking mm-hmm. uh, when Hemlock takes but Omega. Also- yeah, I, I also, if I was Emery, I would have been like, listen, kid, like, if I don't take your blood, someone else will. They're going to put me in a prison cell next to Nala Say, and then there's going to be no one to look out for you. So Yeah. yeah. Let me take the blood sample. <laughs> but we got a little bit more clarification, I think, mm-hmm. from Hemlock on why they need Omega's blood. Um, and it's interesting now, though, that Omega is kind of like armed with more information going into this situation. So I'm mm-hmm. curious how she might use that to her benefit later on. But right now, you know, Hemlock's like, I'm going to show you what this is all about. And it just, it's such, it's so, like, typical of, like, a villain to be, you know, so narcissistic and um, feeling they're just in absolute control. They can, he, he's, he feels so in control that he could tell you exactly what he's doing because he, there is no way in his mind that he could possibly be stopped. So he could really just... And he, I think he also kind of like doing it just like to brag to Omega of like, look mm-hmm. what we're doing. You know, and so um, what did you think about when Hemlock was uh, taking Omega through the facility and then into the into her new quote-unquote home? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think that was a big key aspect of it. He's like, Haha, you thought I was taking you on a tour this is actually where you live now (laughs) (laughs) enjoy these kids they're not fun yeah um i don't know yeah but it was like i mean it's as like expected like it still like leaves a lot like of uncertainty as to what exactly they're trying to do with her blood it's like like does she have the force or is her blood just like accepting of like bonding with mini chlorians yeah. like i don't it, it was like I, I was like i had to watch it twice because i was like did i miss like an, an mm-hmm. explanation here it's like okay like her her blood takes in the the m count transfer but like what does that mean exactly i don't know yeah what's the other interesting part though to this is that you know hemlock you know the other three kids in there he's like they're like somehow part of this Mm -hmm. like there's still he still needs them 
And you would think with just Omega, you know, okay, he only needs Omega, but why does he need these other three kids? What else is, you know, if if Omega's blood, when, you know, mixed with an M count, it doesn't, it doesn't have that degradation. Mm-hmm. Do the other kids, like, replicate the same just to a different degree or a lesser degree or more, however you want to phrase it? Um, so I'm still kind of curious what those kids, the, the role that they still have yet to play in terms in Hemlock's eyes, I guess. Mm-hmm. I'm not really sure because I think that one kid was, like, building blocks with, like, the forest. They are like, floating, I think. And mm-hmm. so has, like, some control of the forest, which is interesting, or at least that's how it looked to me. I could I could be mistaken. But I don't know what these other three kids could be there for then. If if Omega's the key, then why do you need these other three kids? I, I don't know that, unless I miss something. Unless yeah, I don't you know it, something. <laughs> I mean, it seems to me it's like all, all, all these kids have the force, uh, and so he needs to, like, take their blood and, like, mix it with Omega's blood and see if the M count transfers over or something. Oh, maybe. If they're not using Palpatine's blood directly and he's yeah, using these other kids. I, okay, mm-hmm. maybe I can. Okay. It, that, that's kind of what I was, like, taking away is, like, we need to see if you can make a clone force sensitive and the way you do that is by taking other force sensitive people and i don't know yeah and okay. taking their dna or something i could see that that would make more sense yeah yeah i don't know it's 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 hard i'm like i'm like lucasfilm tell me all the details of this fake science that you're inventing and it has <laughs> right. to make sense i have to know it's like in 1999 people were like what the hell are midichlorians what the hell? why would you bring this it's supposed to be a fantasy movie and you're doing too much science fiction and now i'm at a point where i'm like give me more tell me like what's the <laughs> quantum structure what are is it what's, what's the chemistry like where is it on the periodic table i need to know and it's like yeah, i don't know am i asking is there for a, too much problem is there a star wars periodic table like for that universe like Hmm. I wonder if there, I don't know if there is. Anyways, that would be like that would be like if J.R.R. Tolkien made Star Wars, he would definitely come up with something like that. The man, <laughs> yeah, literally yeah. created Elvish as a language just to go with Lord of the Rings. So I'm sure he would invent a new science for yeah. Star Wars. That would, yeah, that'd be great. Oh my um, gosh. But yeah, this this um, you know, episode is a set up for. Are we going back to Tantus, or we got to go back to um, who did Rampart say? Um, he knows a guy. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's like he he doesn't know where Tantus is, but he can maybe find out. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Yeah. So okay, we're so gonna. I, I guess Omega did not have a tracker in her hat. Like she I thought. did not. Yeah. No. Uh, they're going after Rampart. Um, it's. Interesting because we only have four more episodes, mm-hmm. and I'd like to know what, what's what's I, if these next two episodes really have to set up the finale, the last two episodes because mm-hmm. they're a two parter. So I'm, I'm I'm still just like I feel like I know where we're going, but I'm not a hundred percent sure, and I'm not sure if, if people are going to die or live or or run away, or go into hiding. There's still so much up in the air. It's incredible. And they've, I don't want to say they've drawn it out the past couple of episodes, a little bit in my estimation, and and that's fine, because um, I'm still enjoying these episodes. But I think it just goes to show you, at least on my part, how invested I am in what's going to come out of this. Um, Brandon, how do you see the next few episodes going as as the series finally wraps up? Yeah, I I, I don't know. I mean, we're they're gonna they're gonna find their way to Tantus. Some stuff's gonna go down. Omega's probably gonna be free and go on her own adventure that we'll get in some other show or medium or something, um, and then. Yeah, I don't know. I think the Bad Batch will find, or you know, what's left of them, will find a, like a, another calling, you know, uh, against the Empire, fighting against the Empire, helping people in need. I don't know. Uh, yeah, again, I don't know either. <laughs> could be but, anything. <laughs> but 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 I'm really I'm really looking forward to it. So, okay, let's move on to a couple other items we have here. 
uh, to talk about Tales of the Empire. This trailer came out of nowhere. Uh, again, you know, came out last Thursday. Yes, last Thursday in the morning as we were posting last week's episode on this channel. And I, I, this thing just completely floored me because first of all, we were expecting a Tales of the Jedi, you know, season two to come, and this seems to be taking its place given the fact that uh, the logo pretty much was set on fire and <laughs> replaced <laughs> Jedi with Empire. So. Well, I'm sure we'll get a, a volume two of Tales of the Jedi at some point, but right now on May 4th, uh, we're getting stories with Morgan Elsbeth and Barris Offy. That is a duo of characters for this anthology series that I never would have guessed in a million years. Brandon, what did you think uh, when you found out that this is these are the two characters uh, that we're following? Because last time... It was Ahsoka and Count Dooku. Ahsoka mm-hmm. makes kind of sense because, you know, still in, in the fold and the show's coming out and all that. Dooku, a lot of stuff to get into. Very interesting character. and um, But Morgan Elizabeth, a new a newer character uh, from The Mandalorian, or from Ahsoka and Mandalorian. Um, and then Barris Afi, Clone Wars. Uh, she has an interesting history. I don't know if you're too... I don't know if you're caught up or mm-hmm. know kind of like the the bullet points on her story, but yeah, uh, yeah give me your thoughts on, on this trailer. Yeah, well, I, I watched the episode the, for the, the Ahsoka Essential episodes leading up to the show, so I saw everything with her and Ahsoka being framed for her crimes. Yeah, and, and Anakin. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I mean, I, I, I was really into it. I thought it was a great trailer. Um, super cool. Morgan Elsbeth fighting General Grievous, bro. Oh, my gosh. Say less how she met Thrawn, everything. Um, the Barris becoming an Inquisitor stuff is like super interesting. I don't know if we've like seen like in this show, or, but I feel like it was like one of the books maybe um, like the whole aspect of like having to like basically like kill another like prospect of like Inquisitor yeah. prospect to become an Inquisitor. That's looks like we're going to get something along those lines. And um, yeah, I, well, what I was thinking about the other day, what kind of perplexes me is that, you know, Barris's whole like crime against the Republic basically was like what she saw in the Republic was everything, like everything she hated about the Republic and what she like fought against essentially is what the Empire became. So like, mm-hmm. why would she join the Empire except for, I guess, out of self-preservation? She has no choice. It's like become an Inquisitor or die. Um, yeah. Or maybe she's like got like a like a Reva approach where she's like, OK, I'm going to play along until I'm in a position of power. And then that's when I'll make my move, because like, yeah, it just doesn't make sense for her to like idealistically join the Empire, considering the Empire is everything she hated about the Republic. Right. Um, so that was what I was thinking about. Um, but, yeah, I'm super interested to see how it goes down. We're going to see more Merrick from yeah. uh, Ahsoka. <laughs> I had to watch the trailer like a second time before I realized that he was in it. I was like, oh. I caught it the first viewing, and I was like, <laughs> what the? And, and and the Inquisitor behind him, next mm-hmm. to him, was the one that Ahsoka absolutely bodied in Tales of the Jedi. I'm like, dude. <laughs> dude someone, I, t- I think I retweeted it. Someone tweeted out like a picture of just those two, of those two side by mm-hmm. side. And it's like, here's a picture of two Inquisitors that, Ahsoka Tano absolutely destroyed. I was like, <laughs> man, what a club. <laughs> yeah, I, I hope we get to find out. Was Merrick always a fart? Or did, <laughs> did he get resurrected after already dying once before? You and know then what? became I'm, a fart. You know what I'm wondering? I'm wondering if in this show we see like Merrick die, mm-hmm. but then is resurrected into like whatever he, we end up seeing him in Ahsoka. Maybe like I don't. Maybe like we'll see Morgan and Barris's stories like connect yeah, at the end, maybe. and maybe. then Morgan resurrects Merrick or something like that. Because they that could be, be on cool. diverging paths where mm-hmm. Morgan Elizabeth is diving deeper and deeper into the Empire, or you know at least um, serving Thrawn, um, and Barris's mm-hmm. was going that way but now she's on her way out perhaps um because 
you know, for better or for worse, people out there, there's always a redemption story out there. And and Barris is primed for a redemption because you're mm-hmm. right. Idealistically, why would she join the Empire? Yeah. Although she may not see the Inquisitors um, mm-hmm. so aligned with the Empire in terms of ruling the galaxy, um, but more so, I don't I don't know. It's gonna be fascinating to see what her state of mind is is like now that the Republic has fallen, the Empire has taken over. Uh, she's got to answer to Big Daddy Darth Vader. Uh, you know, someone who she has a past with. And, um, again, I'm just super, I'm, because this animation style, I can't wait to see Darth Vader in this, <laughs> like, I can't wait to see this whole show. I mean, Grievous, Darth Vader, Elspeth, Bears, um, just everything that was in this trailer just visually blew me away. Um, I'm really, really looking forward to it. Uh, comes out May fourth. It's gonna be a busy, fun Star <laughs> Wars weekend. Star Wars Day, May May fourth. You got the Phantom Menace. People got the the marathon going on in theaters. Um, but one thing I I am really curious to see how early did Morgan Elizabeth and Thrawn meet up? Because obviously they have to meet before the events of Rebels. Um, mm-hmm. because um, well, I mean. At least before Thrawn gets into in joins Rebels, you know, in season three, I think it was. So maybe in like timeline wise, seasons one or two, Thrawn and but even still, this Thrawn looked pretty young. So it might be pre Clone Wars. It has to be pre Clone War. I don't know. It would be pre- Are they me. Pre- I mean, it's no because like he he said that like he's like it was about offering her services to the Empire. So it was like. He was a part of the Empire. Okay, so it will it be post... Well, obviously it's post-Grievous. So... Because <laughs> um, she I fights like, Grievous. Yeah, I, I, I've heard some people think that... Some people think that that's like a vision. But I, I do feel like it, we're going to see her story start out in the Clone Wars. And we're going to see her fight yeah. Grievous. Yeah, I she'll fight Grievous. That. She'll lose. And then her people got decimated because of the Separatist forces mm-hmm. led by Grievous. And then sometime... After the fall of the Republic, mm-hmm. Morgan Elizabeth and Thrawn have to have have to have linked up. Um, yeah, maybe yeah. So that's I'm really curious about that relationship because it it does answer kind of a question that I had watching Mandalorian uh, with the, the the Jedi episode. Mm-hmm. I was like, how do, how did Morgan Elizabeth come across Thrawn? The guy's been in Peridia for decades. Mm-hmm. Um, when did she come into his service? Like, because we never mm-hmm. saw her in Rebels or referenced, you know. Um, and so I was always like, how did that ever happen? And and I, I guess we're going to get some answers to that, which would be really mm-hmm. fascinating because this series, or this particular one, seems to jump all over the timeline because there's even shots of. Morgan Elizabeth on that planet that's um, taken over with the magistrate and all that. You know, she's on that planet. Is it Corvus? Is that the name of the planet? I'm not sure. I could be making that up. But <laughs> um, I don't think that's the name. But it is a name out there. I don't know. Or, or, or is that the ship that I didn't versio? Anyways, <laughs> I'm all over the place, man. But, um, you know, her story in some part of the Clone Wars. And then another part of it is like in Mandalorian, you know, timeline, like that's. And then in between all of that, you know, I wonder, you know, what is? I wonder if we're gonna get any glimpse into what she was doing when she found out Thrawn was gone. You know, I'm, I wonder if, you know, we're gonna see her that moment where she's contacted by the witches from Peridia. You know, mm-hmm. there's a lot of different things that um, they can touch on with Morgan Elizabeth and 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 shed light on, which I'm really really interested for. Barris, you know, I'm just, I'm curious where her mind is at. You know, what does she think of the galaxy, the Jedi, Order 66, all of that stuff. Um, and what is this path that she's on in terms of the Inquisitor? Because, you know, in that one shot with all with those four Inquisitors, you know, when Darth Vader walks in the room, they all bow down. And Grand Inquisitor's back, you know, I mean, like, 
that was cool to see. There's there's just so many so much good stuff um, that was in this trailer. I can't wait for this series to come out um, May fourth, man. It's gonna be it's gonna be a hell of a day, a hell of a weekend. That's for sure. Uh, any any um, final thoughts on the Tales of the Empire uh, trailer there, Brandon? Mm, I'm just I'm just looking forward to it. Yeah. 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 Uh, last thing we'll talk about here is the Star Wars Outlaws trailer, the story trailer that came out not too long ago, and um, it the game looks it looks pretty cool. It looks really fun. Uh, the story it's kind of like your I I don't know your run of the mill scoundrel story of like mm-hmm. uh yeah someone's after me <laughs> you know I'm, I'm i you know i wronged somebody now there's a hit on my head um but you know um it's interesting with you know the syndicates and you know the, the underworld there and uh we got a little cameo <laughs> from clem there with yep. the tail that's nice um <laughs> clem say hi <laughs> all talkative before and now can't say anything yeah. to the mic you want to give your opinion on the star wars outlaws trailer clem what do you think of nix what do you think of nix clem okay don't <laughs> want to talk about it all right no. it's our subject okay i get it he's he's looking he's sniffing everything he's got to rub himself mark his territory oh, yeah mark the territory uh brandon what'd you think of the star wars outlaws trailer i thought it was super cool i thought the story trailer was really interesting and um you can't see, but Clem is completely blocking my screen right now. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I, uh, yeah, I, 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 you are actually, you actually like watched me react to it. I <laughs> and, did a little, yeah. And I was like, wow, this could be a movie. This, like, I'd be so into this if this was like a movie trailer. Um, looks pretty sick. Um, I really like the tone. I really like the score. The music was really cool. The, music, yeah. the tone and um, it felt like. I don't know. Just like it felt like everything I really enjoy about Star Wars, and uh, I was, and then I was like, "Whoa, is that Han Solo? We saw Han Solo yeah. frozen in carbonite. What the hell?" Which so is was... clear confirmation that this takes place mm-hmm. between Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. Obviously, there was a glimpse uh, of Kira in the trailer. So okay, I was wondering if that was her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was confirmed by okay. the Game Informer or something like that on another. It was confirmed mm-hmm. that it was her. So she will have some sort of presence now. I know she has a presence um, in the comics with the syndicates and all that. Mm-hmm. I'm not super up on on the on, the, on those comic lines. Uh, just I just know that she you know is in charge of some stuff and whatnot and has some uh, entanglements. But uh, it's gonna be curious to see, you know, what role she has at this point in in this <laughs> particular story, not just you know the the galaxy, but this particular story, and if she'll even be in it a whole lot, or you know, I don't know. It, it's gonna be really really interesting because at this point, Han Solo is frozen in carbonite. Like Kira has to come into play somehow some maybe, maybe she tries to you know rescue i don't know i don't even i think that might be even in the comic i don't know so um people who read the comics you can let us know in the comments you know what 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 we're stepping into here with kira and if you think she'll have a big role in this game or you know um i'm just glad we got more content with, with kira i know there's books and, and comics but in a game, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. And 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 this whole syndicate thing, I think, um, in the crime world, is really interesting. Um, I think the gameplay might be more fun, more interesting than the story. I don't know. Uh, just because it seems like a pretty, you know, this guy's after you now. Kind of like, like oh, yeah, that was uh, Solo. <laughs> like the movie. Like, I saw a bit of that movie. And I'm okay to play the actual game, you know. So... Um, are you gonna are you gonna pre order this bad boy, Brandon? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know I, if I'm gonna pre order it or not, but yeah. I, 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 I don't I don't I don't play a ton of video games. Um although I have been a little bit more recently. A uh, future friend of the show, Courtney Luby, got me into playing a little bit of Dead by Daylight. Oh it's like, okay. you know, it's a horror game. Yeah, you like you're either the killer or the survivor, and you gotta like work together to escape. Um, they should do a Star Wars version of that with Ewoks trying to kill you. 
wow okay murder walks I mean, isn't that like a isn't that like a mode on like battle the new Battlefront two where you like a stormtrooper and the Ewoks are trying to kill you? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Is that, that might that, be a mo- oh, I'm sure that's a mod. I don't, I don't know, know if it's actually. I feel like in that the is game. an actual game mode. But I'm Maybe not too sure. I don't know. Every the time new, the latest yeah, Battlefront two that they came out with years ago. Yeah, I never did get huh. the new Battlefront two, but I I'd probably love it. I've been dying to play that map on crate. I just think that's so cool. Oh yeah, yeah. The maps the maps mm-hmm. in Battlefront are always fun as hell. Yeah. Um, and I think I actually, and I actually kind of like dig that story they did mm-hmm. for Battlefront Two with Ida Versio. Um, um, pretty cool, pretty cool actually. Um, yeah. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe I'll maybe I'll get it. Maybe I won't. If it's only if it's coming out on PS4. I don't know if it is. <laughs> um. Oh yeah, that's right. I think it's PS5 I'm, and Xbox. I'm still in the Stone Age, so. Yeah, you're still a number PS4. behind. Yeah, I'm. I'm yeah. very fortunate to have a PS5 here, so wow. I will be getting the game. It comes out Frank's August thirtieth. <laughs> <laughs> comes out August thirtieth, so I'm gonna have to clear my schedule. Um, and I think maybe I'll maybe I'll stream that on the on the channel like I did for Jedi Survivor. Mm-hmm. That was fun. Um, because, uh, um, yeah, I'm real. I'm more than anything. I'm looking forward to the gameplay and the and. The state of the gal. This is like one of my favorite parts of. I know we have a lot of stories. And we spent a lot of time in this part of the timeline, the OT, um, mm-hmm. the original trilogy, and this is where this story takes place. This is where the game takes place. But we've never had a game, you know, take place in the timeline with the technology that we have now. Like I'm really excited to be smack dab in the middle of the Galactic Civil War and. You're in the underworld side, and I think I think it's going to be a lot of fun just to be in that world, and the story will be whatever it's going to be. Um, outside of uh, the Jedi series, um, Fallen Order and Survivor, the other stories haven't really been like that mm. great in the games. Even like the the Squadron uh, game that came out a while ago, um, uh, story was okay. Uh, you know, I like the game. The story was fine. The Battlefront Two, the Universio, a little bit better, more of an interesting story. Um, but still, it's a short campaign, so not a whole lot there. Um, Outlaws, however, looks like it's kind of hopefully, hopefully following the footsteps of the Jedi series, Fallen Order, and Survivor. Although two different companies making the game. Um, but that, with that said, you know. A lot more to dive into with Outlaws, but that style mm-hmm. of game, kind of the open world feel, which will be really cool just to explore and, and have with the world. Um, so I think that's more than anything. That's probably what I'm looking forward to the most. Uh, hopefully, if the story is is cool and fun, then that's that's just bonus. That's just a bonus for me. Um, I can't wait to just live in that world and 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 drive around and hmm. shoot things and like it'll be really interesting to see you know. How the whole, um, I think, was it like the notoriety uh, ranking level, you know, with syndicates and things like that? Um, how you rank with each syndicate? That'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Um, but August thirtieth, not mm-hmm. that far away, Brandon. Yeah, I mean, gives you time to get a PS Five, man. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Maybe maybe Clem will loan me some money. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I will say that uh, watching the trailer, I did feel like. I was like, man, this is like such a cool idea. Like all the crime syndicates together in the same room working together on something. I'm like, it made me feel like we did have like a missed opportunity in like the sequels to have something similar where like the the crime syndicates come together to like help fight the first order oh. since the new Republic was destroyed. Mm. Like that would have been, I think, like a really cool angle. Like even if it was like just brief, like because I always felt like, you know, to get back on my pedestal here to one of the things that didn't work for me about the rise of skywalker is how quickly like like oh lando and chewie are gonna go talk to the core systems and see if they could help and then they just show up and then there's <laughs> yeah, like no yeah, yeah there's like no nothing no build up to it it just happens mm-hmm. like i how cool would it have been you had like an extra like 20 minutes to the movie and there's like a scene where like lando and chewie like talk to all the crime syndicate leaders like in the oh, same yeah. room and they're like, and he's like, hey, we need your help. And they say no. And then like they go to like, you know, like representatives from the core worlds and like another scene and they say no. But then like 
some time passes and it's like interwoven into the story and you think that no one's going to come, but then they actually do all decide to help out. So that would have been cool. That would have been cool. It would have been a lot like Rogue One. Rogue One already did it so well. That's the problem. Rogue One did the <laughs> same thing better years before. So Dang. like it's like it was a tall order, man. Tall order. Admiral, tall they order. needed an Admiral Raddus. They needed someone to go to Exegol and then everyone else to go, Admiral Raddus went to Exegol. He's gone, sir. Oh, crap. Maybe we should go to Exegol. Oh, you're right. Let's do it. Um, That would have been sweet. But, you know, whatever. Raddus. He's a real one, man. Maybe in the sequel, sequel trilogy. Right. The new big bad guy fights everybody. The scoundrels will come together. That'd <laughs> yeah. Be cool. That's my pitch, Disney. Okay. okay. That's my pitch. I'll write the next Star Wars trilogy for you. Raise kids versus raise kids. They're, they're, they're actually leaders of crime syndicates and they're huge disappointments to her until the time comes to fight the new, new, new first order. <laughs> <laughs> the second order. <laughs> what if, what if we. <laughs> <laughs> what if we had crime syndicates, mm-hmm. but they were all Jedi? Jedi crime syndicates. There's just like, oh yeah, like after after the Empire tried to make all the Jedi. So go they're not extinct, Jedi. They're Force. They're Force wielders. But like, right? think yeah. about this, right? Like after, like this is like this is something they could have done too. Like the, the Empire killed all the Jedi, made them go basically extinct. So now mm-hmm. the Force. Like does like over, an overcorrection, and there's like a baby boom of Jedi, oh. like in the future, and so the whole galaxy is just Jedi, based, like force sensitive people, and then that's like a problem. It's like X Men. It's like you just have people with superpowers all over the place. Oh, interesting. Yeah. What if there's like a planet that's like that? You know, mm. I mean that's something they could explore in the in the in the James Mangold um, movie that's supposed to come out in like. I don't know, 17 million years. We do know he's an avid (laughs) listener of the show. Oh, is he? Okay, okay. Well, James, listen up. Jimmy, Mm -hmm. listen. Here, I got a pitch. It's a planet full of force wielders. They're just all over the place. And they can't get off because they don't have hyperspace yet. They don't have hyperspace travel yet. And so they're just all on this rock, just floating, pushing each other aside with the force (laughs) until one day someone lands on that planet. And that someone is Ray from the future. <laughs> Ray from the future. <laughs> she, um, she actually starts the Jedi Order. Yeah, you know. she actually starts the Jedi Order. She was actually uh, in the hallways with Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon and Darth Maul, but she got there a little late, mm-hmm. you know? She was actually there at the funeral of Padme. Um, she was actually there <laughs> for the, the castle run. She was everywhere, isn't guys. This, isn't this basically the plot of, like, the Lego holiday special <laughs> that they, they um, did? Like, Ray, like, yes, time travels actually. to Oh, my God. You're <laughs> right. That is Star Wars. <laughs> Uh, except it was Luke, yeah. Except it was Luke, Luke that was. Um, was it? Yeah, no, it was wasn't it Luke? Ray. I think was there it? was there was a couple versions of Luke there involved. Versions, yeah, that she like buddied up with, but I think it was Ray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Yeah, it is right. You're right. You're right. The holiday special. I think it's canon. The... They should just remake that movie in live action. That's canon. Because that was the, the that Ray was the movie. first thing that came out after Rise of Skywalker, mm-hmm. and. Um, and they address like all the events they of did. everything before it. Finn's training to become a Jedi, like all this stuff. It's Lego canon. You it's know? Lego canon. Um, I was actually gonna. I. It's I canon gonna, until they write something else. Actually, it, by their own <laughs> rules. That's true. <laughs> um, I thought you. I know you weren't gonna reference it because you don't watch Doctor Who, but there is like a Doctor Who storyline from a character, uh, Clara, where. She basically basically inserted herself into the timeline of the doctor and was kind of like there for like all these moments and like mm-hmm. putting things in place, you know. So she was like a central main figure. People, some people had a had an issue with that, um, but th- nonetheless, anyways, they do um, something something similar with Lost. Also, spoiler alert for a twenty year old show. Um, with who? Like um. Because, you know, spoilers for, for season five of Lost, uh, <laughs> they, you've been warned, they, they, they travel back in time um, and oh, right. they when end they up hit... creating the incident, which causes yeah. the hatch to be built, which causes the plane to crash. 
So it's like they like that's right, that's right. Cause their own plane to crash in the future. It's Thanks, like JJ like, Abrams. Time paradox. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was done well. That's Lost was a good show. Lost was a good show for sure. Best show ever. Okay, well. There's even a nice Star Wars reference in there where then they go back in time and and Hurley says he he starts writing the Empire because A New Hope oh. just came out and he starts writing the Empire Strikes Back. That's great. <laughs> so that like he can like get the credit for it. Yeah. And then like I think one of the like Sawyer like one of the other characters like grabs the script that he's writing and he was like and Chewbacca lets out like a big Wookiee roar after he like destroys <laughs> something and he's and then Hurley's just like I made some improvements. <laughs> I made some improvements. Oh man, I gotta re- I've totally forgot about that. I gotta go back and rewatch yeah, that. Yeah, that's funny. Um, it's a funny little right. bit. Let's uh, let's wrap up here with some cues from the Discord, and Jeez. the first one is from Sean Sullivan, and he and his question is, how are you? You know, I've I've been better, Sean, but you know, I've got a job with a hot popcorn bucket, so <laughs> that's right. Who's Wh- laughing wh- now? <laughs> who's got it worse than you? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> who's laughing now, universe? Uh, Sean is over off doing uh, rookies in rule books. If you're not aware, so go check that Very out over there. Title. Um, really well done over there. Got artwork and music and and uh, and uh, the whole shebang over there. It looks great. The whole shebang. Uh, as for myself, I'm I'm trying to get over this freaking cold for like I'm like at the tail end. I, I'm sure I feel I sound stuffy probably. Um, just the last part, just the last little bit of this cold, and and I'll be home free. Other than that, doing pretty good. Um, all right, next one is from E87 Daniel, and he asks, Do you think Omega will train the other kids? to connect with the forest using her experience with Gungi and Ventress, mm. even though she can't do it. And then they try, and then they all try to escape question mark. And then Khan will just add on real quick. Uh, uh, oh, never mind. Yeah. So back to Daniel's question. Do you think Omega is going to talk to these kids and be like, yo, you have special abilities. <laughs> Let's try something. What do you think? Maybe like she could help them harness it a little better. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It'll be be interesting to see how that plays out because maybe they have something to teach her. Who knows? Hey, look at that. Maybe, yeah. maybe. Because um, I really, yeah, I think the only thing that, that Omega really does is the meditation thing, which mm-hmm. can certainly go a long way uh, in a situation like that, like the one that they're in. Um, I do think she's going to try and escape. That's, I mean, that's just what she does. I mean, which is kind of like the dumbest thing Hemlock could have done was leave Omega with those kids. Like, what do you think she's going to do? (laughs) Like, she's going to try and rally the troops and then bust out of there, you know? A crazy thing that they could do is since they've proven that her blood bonds super well with midi chlorians is there's all the kids just give her a blood transfusion and like pump their midi chlorians <laughs> into her and just make her like ultra powered for like okay, a brief period of you're time. You're talking about uh secret invasion on, <laughs> on Disney Plus. <laughs> <laughs> the very last episode. They could just make her like super force powered for like 15 minutes and she just oh like my blows gosh, a, blows a imagine? hole through the vault and escapes. Uh-huh, Temporary like, force powers. Yeah, like her, the mini chlorians bond to her blood. So like, there's no limit to how high her mini chlorian count could be. Yoda's is over like twenty thousand. I bet we can get her up to a hundred k easy. <laughs> easy. <laughs> oh like, my god! Just get super weird science fiction with it at this point. Who cares, man? You know, I do think it's that I, leaving Omega with the kids. Dumb move. Just a dumb move. And like, I, I think that also. Um, ties into Hemlock's arrogance, which is like, mm-hmm. like, like she's not gonna like you know who this is, right? Hemlock, like, you know she's gonna try and bust out of there. You know she's, you know. And then, like, can you imagine? Like, seriously though, if Omega goes to these kids and is like, you don't understand, you have the ability to do some amazing stuff, and and, and maybe those kids already know. I don't know, but maybe she gives them kind of like you know that pep talk of like you can get out of here like you know i don't know could be interesting um mm-hmm. and maybe it ties into because like it goes but kind of like back to my theory of like 
okay, well, Omega wanted to help free the clones from Tantus, but now, once she completes that, if they do, well, there's all these kids, these Jedi, these Force wielding kids out there, um, the path, you know, so it it could tie into all that stuff. I don't know. Interesting to think about with Omega um, and those kids in the in the facility if that happens. Um, okay, last last question here comes from Erdan and uh, wants to know how many Logan verse films have you watched? And then Khan adds on, if I may, if I may, I would like to add on to Erdan's question by asking, have you also watched any of the Varker verse films alongside the Logan verse films? Uh, Brandon, what say you? What, what's, 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 what's your answer? I have watched none of them. <laughs> wow. Not that I'm not a supportive friend, mm-hmm. but I've also been told, no, Brandon, also with the Obi-Wan cut, no, Brandon, don't watch it right now. Wait until you can come over to my house and eat wings with me, and then we can all watch it <laughs> yes. together. Yes, 100%. I'm waiting, I'm waiting for my wings. So, <laughs> um, which, you know, me and you, we got to figure out when we go mm-hmm. down by Kevin. We got we to figure that out because we've been down there, but never at the same time. Mm-hmm. We've gone down to visit Kevin, but we've never been down there at the same time. So we got to figure out a day to do that. And then we can watch all the Loganverse films. I mean, not all of them. And the Varkorverse. Um, and the Varkorverse. Varkorverse. Um, I will say, I've I've seen the first one. I've seen the first one. And I have not seen the other ones because Kevin was like, no, no, no. Wait. <laughs> like, <laughs> okay. Um, even though he will come out here ne- next week and say, how come you guys haven't watched them? And I'm going to say, because you, and then me and Brandon will be like, because you told us to wait, and he will ignore it and be, and be like, you, sh- you you haven't watched them, blah, blah, blah. Um, <laughs> I I have watched that first episode of the Revan uh, series he was doing, uh, like the prequel series he was doing. I watched the first episode of that one. That mm-hmm. was pretty cool. Um, in terms of the Varkorverse, Varkorverse uh, I have not, but I will say this. Um, Kevin, when he's talking about that Convergence crossover, um, I'm actually pretty excited for that. I'm actually pretty... Kevin does a great job of selling that. I think Mm -hmm. it's going to be pretty cool. Um, He shared some stuff with us, you know, behind the scenes um, and the things that they're working on. Not too much, really, but just kind of... I know everything. (laughs) You know everything. I I have the script right here. I want (laughs) to... No, it looks really interesting. Lightsabers? (laughs) Um, looks interesting. Looks fun. Uh, the convergence, uh, Matt, um, team up movie that they're doing. Um, pretty cool. It's a super something cool that, idea. It's like, it is. It's something that Star Wars could never really do. Um, like the fact, yeah. I mean, just the fact that they are pulling this off at all. I remember like Kevin talking about it like for the first time a while back, and just thought that that was like super neat. Just, he... Like. It's like, yeah, like I have my own KOTOR movies and this other guy has his own KOTOR movies and my guy's good and his guy's evil. Imagine yeah. if they met. That's I'm like, that's sold. That's like, pretty cool. Pretty cool. That's pretty sweet. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, I'm looking I'm looking forward to it. Your KOTOR um, fans are eating good, man. Yeah, and hey, look, uh, KOTOR, you know, that game, still in the works. Saber Interactive, still working on that game. <laughs> we'll see. So, um, no, no, they, they just came out with an article. Uh, and like the one of the honchos over there, the VP or whatever, was like, "Yeah, we have the game. We're working on it, developing it." I'm like, "Okay." I was at was at Target the other day. I think I saw Kotor two for the Switch available. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty yeah. neat. I still need to play Kotor two, and see. I waited because my other roommate David, friend of the show, was on the show like last year <laughs> former a friend of the show uh, former <laughs> friend of the show at this point uh he was like um you gotta play it with the additional scene whatever or something like that content and i was like oh okay and then um so i kind of used that as an excuse not to play it but i'm like screw that i'm just gonna play the game and i'll go watch the the other ending whatever on youtube or something like that anyways with wings and <laughs> with wings <laughs> Anything KOTOR related needs to have wings. Mm-hmm. Mambo style, guys. Mambo okay? style wings. Uh, <laughs> when this movie releases and you guys don't have a plate of Mambo style wings next to your computer or TVs, you're doing it wrong. Yeah. So. Okay. 
That's the official that's way. To, that's the official. That's canon. Yeah, <laughs> that's the official way. The canon way to watch Kotor is with mm-hmm. Mambo style wings. Okay, all right. That's gonna do it for this week. I have a stuffy nose. That was Brandon Hanna. Come back next week as we once again we'll talk all about the Bad Batch episode thirteen. I, I don't know the title of that one, even though I know it's out there. Um, but come back here for more Star Wars discussions and 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 everything else Star Wars related. We'll talk about it. We'll joke about it. Um, we'll break it down. Um, but uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And we'll see you next week. Scoundrel. I like the sound of that. <laughs>